Since their inception in 6900 BBY, the Sith have been basically synonymous with the dark side. Their discoveries, teachings, and envelopment in the dark side is what gives them their unique powers, and what usually gives rise to some of the most powerful and ambitious enemies of the entire Republic. What sets the Sith apart from most other Force-based organizations is their unwavering devotion to the dark side itself. But their devotion goes far beyond just mere study, but they pretty much worship the idea of power, and when power comes from the dark side, that is the target of their endless obsessions. This has been what is consistent with the Sith Order for thousands of years, and what continues to be consistent with them. Because they consider the dark side to be the sole root to their power, they believe the light side to be ultimately inferior and something to be avoided. In that case, the light does actually cripple the Sith since they are so consumed with darkness. Very few outliers ever emerge from the Sith Order to question this philosophy. But today, my friends, our researchers have come across an astounding bit of heresy, a sect known as the Light Sith. A group that emerged sometime in the Old Republic era, specifically during the era known as the Cold War during the Great Galactic War. The implications of the Light Sith are not only strange, but very confusing, and we have much to discuss in today's holocron. The idea of light side oriented Sith Lords came around during the Great Galactic War of the Old Republic. It was a small sect of heretical Sith who detached from the reconstituted Sith Empire, a Sith Empire at the time led by Lord Vitiate. The group believed that introducing love and compassion into their ways would help them gain more power and favor with the Force itself. Essentially, these Sith abandoned the ways of the dark side completely in order to pursue the light, though it isn't technically explained how they actually achieved this. Upon first hearing this, many of us here at the archives were inclined to ask if these Sith followed the light side and not the dark, then why do they still call themselves the Sith? It isn't like they are of the Sith pure-blooded race, though some of them were, but they still claim to operate under the Sith banner. The official definition of a light Sith are Sith that use the light side but retain their devotion to the Sith organization. How this is accomplished is what they claim that the light side is the true path to power, and they wish to spread their teachings throughout the rest of the Sith Order in an effort to sway the rest of the population over to this brand new philosophy believing in a way that the light side was more powerful than the dark, but still wanting to be Sith. Light Sith started out as the findings of a single Sith Lord who lived sometime prior to the year 4606 BBY, a time that predates Revan by about 300 years, as well as the events of the Great Galactic War as a whole by about 600 years. This Sith Lord's name was Keleth Ur, and he had resided within the hidden temple of the Sith Empire on Droman Kaas, there along with the Sith Emperor. At some point in his life, he discovered new forms of passion that he believed would be the path to true power. Being obsessed with power like all other Sith, he had attempted to share his beliefs amongst the Sith people, believing that he had achieved a secret that would lead them to ultimate victory. All of this, though, went about as well as you might expect. He was labeled a heretic and was hunted down by the order of the Sith Emperor Vitiate directly, reaching the ears of the Emperor himself. In the latter hours of his life, the Sith Lord created a holocron with all of his newfound wisdom, hiding it in a place where he hoped no other Sith unready for it would ever find. Shortly thereafter, though, he was located, found guilty, and executed. His holocron, however, would be found during the Great Galactic War, more specifically, sometime around 3642 BBY, the ending of the 10-year-long Cold War conflict. Around this time, another group of Sith would find Keleth Ur's holocron, absorbing his teachings, and as a group, decided to follow them, abandoning the dark side in favor of the light as their predecessor had done. They got along well for a brief period of time, even creating a new rank for themselves called Darth Imperius. Infuriated by this apostasy though, the Dark Council selected Darth Senedus to hunt down all of these impure Sith Lords. After a lengthy manhunt, Senedus and his Inquisitors would eventually locate and destroy every single member of the Light Sith Council, as well as every single member of their order, and then disposed of the Ur Holocron. The faction of the Light Sith was incredibly short-lived, and perhaps it was better this way. These sentiments echo the mad ravings of Darth Gravid, the insane Sith Lord of the Rule of Two era who lost his mind when he tried to introduce Jedi teachings into the Sith Order. 
believing that this was the path to immortality, something that resulted in the destruction of thousands of years worth of Sith knowledge under this single Dark Lord's watch. Darth Gravid would likely be the last and only light Sith to exist after this rogue faction from the Old Republic era. What's very interesting though, and a key difference, is Darth Gravid very much went insane while Kelleth Ur very much maintained his mind despite incorporating light side teachings into the Sith Order. It is even said that upon his execution, he was at complete peace, only wanting the best for his Sith brethren, and believing that the light side of the Force and all things was the path to achieving this harmony. In Kelleth Ur's direct words, it's a lie, fear is a lie, passion is a lie, Fear gives only temporary powers, and passion is easily manipulated. Real strength in the Force comes when one is no longer afraid. Kelleth would go on to say that Sith limit themselves by being trapped in fear. They would need to embrace the light side, and if they did, they would free themselves by the shackles of their fear and become truly powerful. But now it's time to take a deep look at these light Sith. It's definitely very inventive to feature some Sith that are non-conformants to the typical doctrine. Such beings as Darth Vectivus, Plagueis, and even Gravid all make for interesting stories as they each had their own ways of shaping the Sith Order and their own ideas about the Force. But on a conceptual level, it is a little difficult to see the purpose of a light side Sith. To put it bluntly, light Sith most likely sound like Jedi with extra steps. On a fundamental level, Sith are affiliated with the dark side. The Sith and the dark side are one. The Sith themselves were formed around the purpose of following and pursuing the dark side to achieve power. The Jedi refused the dark side, the Sith accept it. This is the rule. They were originally known as Dark Jedi. The Second Great Schism was where the Sith Empire was truly born. In a narrative sense, for a Sith to actually decide to follow the light, they might as well just go and join the Jedi. The reason given for the light Sith though, is that they are still loyal to the Sith Empire, but rather use the light side instead of the dark. While patriotism is understandable, this still doesn't make that much sense because the Sith Empire and the Order as a whole makes their decision largely on a basis of pursuing power. And not only power, but domination. Two things that the followers of the light do not agree to. Power and domination are the dark side, and power and domination are the Sith. Without these, the Sith do not exist. Because the Order is built upon dark side ideals, if those philosophies are taken away or corrupted, the entire Sith Order will collapse. But by embracing the light side, they are no better than the Jedi with looser rules and a few less numbers. The idea of a light side Sith is superfluous, it's unnecessary, and if we're being frank, somewhat ridiculous. Nonetheless, it is an aspect of the lore that we wanted to highlight. But now we open it to all of you. Are we being too harsh here at the Archives? Is the idea of a light side Sith intriguing? And what is the significance of a Sith Lord and a Sith Order that choose to incorporate elements of the light side and the Jedi within it? As always, my friends, thank you for visiting the Archives. May the Force be with you, and I hope that you're having a great day.